We welcome you to this second Sunday in our Lenten season to Trinity United Methodist Church in Newport News, Virginia. We ask that you would continue with us on this journey through Lent for the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Come let us walk in the light of the Lord, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. Just a few announcements. We ask that you would continue to remember uh, Reverend Libby Wright and Shirley Ruth and her family as they prepare for their journey uh, to see uh, Betsy Pender. And we ask that if you could kindly write letters of encouragement or cards of joy uh, to, to Betsy, addressed at 372 Kinsman Way, Hampton, Virginia, 23666, so that they might take these uh, correspondence with them as they visit uh, Betsy. Then our, a letter from our York River District Superintendent, River Son Young Kim, she's thanking us and all the other churches of the York River District for our, for our, I believe, 100% contribution to the district apportionments. And uh, she is thankful for all the churches that have allowed our district to um, be able to report uh, positively for our district apportionments. Would you join us in our call to worship? The pathway is just beginning. We have encountered the wilderness. Now we are moving rapidly toward Jerusalem. Along the way, we will witness astonishing acts of mercy and justice. Lord, be with us on the journey. Guide our lives and our steps, we pray. Amen. And our opening prayer of confession, truly this is a time of the year where we uh, do repent and study those things that we may have gotten wrong. So it's a good time for us collectively and individually to repent and to confess our sins. Would you join me in our prayer of confession? Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. Lord. We confess, confess to, to you. you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other, and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. 
Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment and free us from sin. Our hymn of praise this morning, O God, our help in ages past. Number 117 in our United Methodist Hymnal. Our prayer of illumination is on our screen. We ask that you would follow along with us. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the New Testament. Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. Hear these words. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world. But through the righteousness that comes by faith, for if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promises comes by faith. 
so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it is, was credited to him as righteousness. The words... It was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. May the Lord add a rich blessing upon the reading, hearing, understanding and living of his word. During our time of joys and concerns, we ask that you would pray deeply for those persons who are listed, for the families that are remembered, some because of illness, others because their loved ones have taken that journey uh, to be with the Lord. We ask that you would continue to pray for them. And as a special time of pastoral privilege, I would like to pray for, for my son, Marcus Nix, who perhaps right now is still laboring and having his breath aided by life support instruments. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God, this morning. You know each of our needs. You know what we want. But more especially, you have promised that you would supply our needs, not according to what we ask or think, but according to your riches and glory. I declare right now, O God, that the devil is a liar. We ask, Lord, that you take charge of Marcus's case and all those who are infirmed or in distress. Dispatch your angels to their bedside so that they might touch them and restore the energy of life into their bodies. We ask especially, Lord, that you would grant these petitions, for we pray in the blessed name of Jesus, our Christ. We pray in his name. Amen and amen. And now would you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Pray in our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, would you recite with us the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning's hymn of preparation is where he leads me, I will follow. Selection 338 from our United Methodist Hymnal. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And may you somehow bless your people 
through me or in spite of me. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Black Lives Matter. In attempting to preach about the subject of the worth and value of black lives, I, I find it not a very difficult proposition at all. But the simplest proposition is offered in the biblical text of today. Abraham heard the voice of the Almighty at the age of 99 years old. The voice said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked to him, saying, As for me, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. The covenant is explained in verse 6. I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Of course, this is from the King James Version. The covenant was established by God and is therefore still in effect. The book of Romans seals the matter in saying in Romans 4 and 23, the words, it was credited to him Abraham, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. So the covenant is clear. It applies to us by faith that God, in covenant with Abraham, covered black persons as well as others of faith. So if God said it, I believe it, so let it be. Even if you do not believe that the covenant relationship is still valid, then believe by faith that those who believe in God alone are included as the children of God. Then, still, black lives matter. If they matter to God, then they should matter to us. Before I was privileged to attend seminary, I had no knowledge of black persons who are included in our Bible narratives. As I was introduced to the study of the Old Testament, my professor, Dr. Jean Rice, a Quaker, lifted some of the persons of color who inhabit the pages of Scripture. From Moses to Jeff Zephaniah, there are many persons of various ethnicities and colors who are prominently featured in scripture. I'm told that most of our major religions, sciences, and medical procedures were developed by gifted and caring minds of committed believers who happen to be black. Additionally, the area of the world we call the Middle East was once a part of the African continent, but because of shifting land masses, there is enough separation to allow distinction from Africa. Yet the real elephant in the room is not black people in general. The real issue is whether the lives of black Americans matter. In the minds of many people of America, the descendants of slaves brought in chains to this country and who for centuries were considered less than human are still not entitled to the dignity and equal access under the law as descendants of European ancestry are. The unfortunate truth is that American blacks are essentially a new people on the earth. These recipients of God's grace are both products of Africa and are persons of European, Asian, Native American, and Caribbean descent. Most, if not all, African Americans are a mixture of almost all the nations of the world. 
the real difficult reality to grasp, is that we might be the only people who can be labeled made in America. These are often the hands that have laid the bricks, mixed the mortar, picked the cotton, cooked the meals, harvested the crops, nurtured the babies, created the music, manned the sports, and served the country. But who God keeps and cherishes, as if God Almighty gifted them to the world. And yet America seems unable or unwilling to value the lives of black and brown people. Of all the people covered by the covenant made between God and Abraham, black people in America seem to be the most feared. It is apparently true that we fear most what we do not understand. There seems a potential in black bodies that threatens so many others. It might be the strength of the genetic information. It seems that the black gene is a dominant gene that must be expressed. God has proven God's intention to honor his covenant with Abraham. The Israelites were freed from bondage through the Red Sea, but the slaves of African descent were freed unlike any other peoples on earth. God chose to free them to live among the very benefactors of their slave labor. It was the hand of God that gave liberty to those enslaved masses. It is still the hand of God that empowers black people to live amidst oppression and continual attempts to discourage progression. Black theologians affirm that the Jesus we serve has always been on the side of the oppressed and the disenfranchised. To this hope, a large percentage of black Americans aspire, and regardless of repressive circumstances, many remain in hope that America will back up its claim to be the home of the brave and the land of unlimited opportunity. Much of the development of black and brown people has come via the organized black church experience. It is the black church that has, that has provided a platform for the development of talent to be shared with the world. It is with the audacious admonition of many black mothers to their sons and daughters that success can come only through faithful preparation and that each should aim to be at least twice as good as their white contemporaries to be considered worthy in any area of pursuit. This indeed is a weighty burden to bear. Doc Rivers, a black professional basketball coach said recently, it's amazing why we keep loving this country and this country does not love us back. It should be counted as credit to all those who march and peacefully protest in our streets for justice and equality of opportunity. Yet those who believe that God is on the side of justice are often demeaned and discredited. Our faith in the Bible is born out of the history of humankind in relation to the God of grace and our deliverance to freedom's door. Yet in far too many areas of national life, the door is not always a door of welcome and full freedom. I believe that if each of us who profess faith in the Holy Bible could read the biblical narrative identifying each character by the modern construct of race, many of our heroes and much of the growth of our faith might be muted. And this simply because God has accomplished his story in God's own way and not according to our superficial preferences or human prejudices. The Bible is a progressive revelation of humankind's understanding of God. It was written and organized by men and it has stood the test of time for relevance, truth, and substance. It is so constructed that it provides a roadmap of the intimacy of God with man. 
Within its pages are affirmed that black lives matter to God. If they matter to God, then we ought not be so eager to oppose the author of the universe. As history is made and documented, even the records are being are best recorded and read because of the color of blackness. Sometimes we struggle to accurately remember, but we really cannot ever dismiss the understanding that black lives have mattered, do matter, and will always matter in the economy of God. If any seriously doubt that black lives do matter, those who do need to take it to the one who is bigger than each and all of us and wiser than any human being. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And God blessed them. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. Each of us, white, black, yellow, brown, or red, is covered by the covenant between God and Father Abraham. And if we are not covered, then God is far more humorous than we could ever have imagined. Amen? Amen. Amen. May we be dismissed with this prayer. O oh, merciful Father, in compassion for your sinful children, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of the world. Grant us grace to feel and to lament our share of the evil that made it necessary for him to suffer and to die for our salvation. Help us by self-denial, prayer, and meditation to prepare our hearts for deeper penitence and a better life and give us a true longing to be free from sin. 
through the deliverance won by Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Go in peace and be cleansed. Amen. <laughs>